first question I have for all of us is telling other people about G, uh, Jesus and our faith and encouraging them to take part seems to be a bit unique to Christianity. Why is this sharing our, our faith and Christianity synonymous with each other? So, like, you don't see a lot of other faiths so aggressively or eagerly, mm. is probably a better way of saying mm-hmm. it, going out and trying to, and I'm going to use this word lightly, mm-hmm. convert mm-hmm. people like Christianity. So why is Christianity, why is it such a basic tenet of Christianity? Well, that's a really good question. I mean, I think it, honestly, it kind of stems back from a command in many ways that Jesus gave us, which was the, one of the last things that he said was, was to go into all Matthew 28, to go into all the world and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the father, teaching them, you know, who I am and baptizing in the name of the father, son, and the Holy spirit. So, um, at the very like most root sort of foundational, uh, level, it's, it's our savior, um, who we've placed our trust in has told us there's more people that I want to know me and I want you to tell them about me. I mean, like that would be the start, one of the starting points, mm-hmm. at least I think. And you think that's kind of unique to Christianity is this, this call to share and Christianity is like, no, this is too good. Actually, even the gospel, the word gospel, good yeah. news. Yeah. It's like, we want other people it's to hear about news. This. That's right. To be told, not a set of rules to be adhered by, not um, ethnic, uh, sort of you're born into it, and so now you sort of have to live underneath the, the, the constraints of being born into it. I mean, so it's none of that. It's, it's at the fundamental sort of um, nature of, of the, our faith is it is good news, and news is always meant to be shared, or else it's not news. It's just it's your biography or something. Well, Wait, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like even at the handful of times in the New Testament where like Jesus had encounters with people and then basically told them to go tell others about that encounter, it was never about like now go tell people like how to live their life. Like so like the rules are the things you guys were just talking about, but it was more so like go tell people what has happened here today or what Mm -hmm. you've just experienced or um, what maybe Jesus has done for them. Um, So it's like go go share more about that than with people around you. That's really good because what makes that different is like it, when we share anything we're excited about, we always share from our personal experience. Yeah, totally. So it's like more of the story aspect, not like go share the religion. It was like, go share the story. Like Mm -hmm. a good example is like, if I'm excited about Target, I'm not going to tell you there's this place called Target. I've never been there. Yeah. I'm going to be like, oh, I went there. This is what I experienced. And yet, you know, I think sometimes we forget that sharing our faith is supposed to be the same way. It's like telling the good news of what happened to us with mm-hmm. others. So is telling other people though about Jesus uh, critical to being a Christian? So here, here's a question. So like if, if up to this point and I've lived as a Christian, I, I love Jesus and I've, uh, you know, I've celebrated Jesus, you know, you know, transformation in my life and he, uh, he gave his life for me. Um, but I haven't really shared. I haven't told any other people. I've kept it kind of to myself and my faith as a secret. Do I have to? Is is that critical to to my faith? Well, I think it depends on the way you just use the word secret. Because there's something to me that's different around like I'm actually keeping it and choosing not to tell anyone versus like maybe I actually don't know how or I'm not comfortable doing that. Hmm. So there might be like a slight nuance around just even the word secret. Yeah, but what do you think? Do you think that's like, um, cho- isn't that a choice though to say I'm not comfortable doing it or I don't feel equipped to do it? Isn't that still a choice because you choose not to be equipped? Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, I mean, I guess. And maybe I if mean, it's like the choice, whether it's like on purpose or it's yeah. just like um complacency sounds like too strong of a word, but it's just like, I don't know how to wade into that and I don't know how to do it. So it's almost like you're more paralyzed potentially than like, you're just purposefully choosing not to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Although we, one of the, I I think that's interesting where um, Joseph of Arimathea was called a secret disciple. And apparently he was following Jesus and uh, other, no one knew it. 
and so, but he was a disciple. So, so now this was before the this was before the resurrection and all that, and okay. I'm assuming after that some things started changing maybe for him and all that. But but my point is there's a process too. Some people may be just following Jesus. Some people may be just. And they don't really know how to talk about it, maybe, yeah. or they don't know to, yeah, you know, or they're scared to talk about it a little bit because they don't know the cost that that's going to bring or or whatever. And so for for some people that they hear that and they go like, oh, that's that's a little freeing to hear like you know maybe it's maybe it's not you know you know uh, the mission critical right away, but is there something that happens to us? when we overcome some of those fears when we or when we do develop a sense of like i i i don't want to take this secret with me it's too good jesus has changed my life too much is there something that happens to us as christians when we start to share our faith definitely first of all you're you're following through on the command of jesus and jesus always blesses obedience so yes i mean so one is you'll experience, I think, blessing as a result of that. Two, you talking about your faith forces you again and again to relive the story of God's faithfulness to you. That's always valuable. Um, and then it also helps you to articulate. Um, it helps to strengthen it when you get questions about it, too. Yeah. Well, what about this? What about that? What about that? And if you don't have an answer, that's fine. But it drives you back to the scriptures or it might drive you back to, to community, you know, of other Christ followers to to kind of go, hey, I got question about I don't really know. And that that's a valuable thing. Yeah. So to me, you're obeying what Jesus Christ said to do, and he'll always bless obedience. You're strengthening your own convictions because it'll cha- it might get challenged and that'll lead you back to why you believe the things you do. And third, it will remind you of God's goodness and faithfulness the more you tell his story of his goodness and faithfulness. These are all really good things. So, Joanna, I, I'm sorry, Jason. I was just going to say, though, but you, you, you said a question that was interesting a moment ago when you said, can you be a Christian and not share your faith, I think, or something. I think that was kind of one I, of the ways. I, it was pretty strong, yeah. Well, the answer is you can be a Christian, absolutely, because the way you become a Christian is you trust in the power of Jesus Christ to save you from your sins by faith and by grace alone. That's how you become a Christian, not because of anything you do. Mm -hmm. It's because of you trust in everything Jesus Christ has done. Now the question becomes, how do you grow? How do you, how do you uh, experience the fullness of life that Jesus has for you? You're already a Christian. And one of those ways is you go and you share that and you talk about all that. So to me, it's not a matter of, can you be a Christian? Absolutely. But you can be a Christian and still hang on to a lot of things that maybe aren't great for you, or you can choose to resist God's nudges to grow, and you stop growing. So you you never, Paul talks about it in one of his letters as, you never really move past the milk. Like it's all baby stuff, yeah. and there's meat out there. So how do you get the meat? Um, you do the things, you keep obeying what Jesus said to do and you grow and you put down deep roots and, and all of that. I love that. 